Mulan, a place for Mulan. She was a spirited girl. Some might say too spirited. Sometimes she didn't fit in with what was expected at home. And Mulan didn't exactly fit in with the other girls in her village either. She wasn't careful or quiet. She was rarely graceful. And she was almost never refined. Mulan didn't fit in with the chickens. Because, well, she wasn't a chicken. Mulan's mother found it difficult to explain why Mulan was the way she was. Mulan, her mother would say, I need you to at least try to behave. I do try, Mulan said. Then please try harder. So when Mulan practiced calligraphy, she tried her very hardest. Mulan listened intently while her father explained the proper way to make brush strokes. But eventually, she found herself staring at the sky. Father, have you ever noticed that our brush strokes look like the neck of a crane? Graceful and strong. Mulan's father smiled and then redirected Mulan to the task at hand. Paying attention was difficult. After a while, Mulan found new uses for her calligraphy brush, and her parents were not amused. Mulan, there is a time and place for warriors. But now is not that time, and this is not that place, her father said. Later that day, Mulan visited the horses in the courtyard. Her favorite was Black Wind. She enjoyed taking care of him. And she especially loved to ride. There was nothing better than the feeling of the wind in her hair as black wind galloped through the lush countryside. Riding was Mulan's one comfort. But she wondered if the day would ever come when she'd find a place to belong. When Mulan returned home, it was time for weaving. She watched as her little sister did it effortlessly. Xiao, you make your ancestors proud, her mother said. Mulan tried, but couldn't quite figure it out. Xiao helped clean up. You're fighting the materials instead of working with them. Mulan's sister untangled the fabric. Take this piece, Xiao said. You're trying to make it something it doesn't want to be. I've been doing a lot of that lately, Mulan said, sighing. In the back of the room, their father cleared his throat. Xiao is very wise. He invited Mulan to go for a walk. As soon as they got outside, Mulan cried, I try so hard to be like everyone else. I know, her father said. But I don't belong. And the harder I try, the less I fit in, she said. Mulan's father pointed to a meadow full of yellow flowers. Mulan, see how these flowers fit together? When they're in a field, it's difficult to tell them apart. A tear ran down Mulan's cheek. I would give anything to be like them. But what if you are not a yellow flower, Mulan? He motioned to a nearby tree. What if you are a magnolia blossom? No matter how hard she tries, a magnolia will always be what she is. Beautiful, distinct, and different. Mulan's father continued. You jump in puddles because you are adventuresome. You twirl your brushes because you see possibilities others don't. You ride horses because you are spirited and brave. Mulan's heart swelled. She felt her sadness melt away. She wasn't the same as everyone else, but Mulan had gifts of her own. Mulan knew her path would be different, and for the first time, different didn't feel so bad. 